Hello, my name is Iota Loretta, and today I'll be talking about systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE. SLE is a multi-organ, multi-system autoimmune disease. It primarily affects the joints, skin, and kidneys. Over 90% of SLE cases occur in women, with most of those cases occurring between the ages of 15 to 40. Despite this, it's important to understand that it can happen at any age. There's also a higher incidence, two to three times, in African Americans, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Asian Americans in, than in a Caucasian population. SLE is associated with deficiencies in the classical pathway and is diagnosed using anti-double-stranded DNA and anti-Smith antibodies. SLE causes damage via both neutrophils and complement, which results in consumption of C3 and C4 from plasma. This in turn leads to low CH50 and AP50, which are both measurements of complement activity. In lupus nephritis, when the kidneys are affected, assessment of kidney damage is through the presence of IgG, C3B, or C4D deposition. Deposition of these leads to immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis. Some other major side effects of SLE include hemolytic anemia and cytopenia, which are due to complement mediated attack and phagocytosis. In order for SLE to be diagnosed in a patient, at least four or more of the following 11 criteria must be met. The first criterion is malar rush which is a fixed, flat, or raised erythema, commonly referred to as butterfly rash, as shown in the figure. The next criterion is discoid rash, which is erythematous raised patches and scaly plaques, which can result in scarring. Photosensitivity is a skin rash as a result of unusual reaction to sunlight. Oral ulcers can be observed, which are usually painless. Patients may also have arthritis. Cirrhositis may be present as either pleuritis, inflammation of the lining of the lungs, or pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium surrounding the heart. Renal disorders may manifest as persistent proteinuria or cellular casts, which occur when the kidneys are damaged and cells enter the filtrate. Neurologic disorders such as seizures and psychosis may also be seen. Cytopenias are reductions in the number of cells normally found in the blood. Immunologic criteria include the presence of anti-double-stranded DNA and anti-Smith antibodies. Lastly, anti-nuclear antibodies may be found. However, these are characteristic of many autoimmune diseases and are not specific to SLE. Up to 60% of patients who have SLE may suffer from lupus nephritis. 10 to 30% progress to end stage renal disease within 15 years. Because SLE is a chronic illness, lupus nephritis is usually asymptomatic. Therefore, it's important that renal function is regularly evaluated in SLE patients. Lab results of these patients may show proteinuria, hematuria, and increased creatinine. Physical findings may show hypertension and edema. Nephrotic syndrome, hyperlipidemia, and hypercoagulability may also be present. Renal biopsy is necessary in any patient with symptoms of nephritis. There are three important pathogenic mechanisms of SLE. One, immune complex deposition and vascular leukoocclusion. This damage can be caused by polymorphonuclear cells, also known as PMNs, or the complement system. Two, cytopenias caused by antibodies against lymphocytes, erythrocytes, and platelets. Three, platelet aggregation and thrombosis due to antiphospholipid antibodies. Let's visualize how the neutrophil-mediated inflammatory process occurs. Once an immune complex gets deposited in kidney, 
Neutrophils which have FC receptors on their membrane can recognize the FC region of immunoglobulins found in the immune complex that is deposited in the cell membrane. Once the FC receptor on the neutrophils binds to the immune complex, the neutrophils degranulates and releases neutrophil granule enzymes such as defensins and proteases. It also releases radical oxygen species such as superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, causing inflammation and tissue damage or lupus nephritis. Now, let's look at how complement mediated damage occurs. Same as before, the immune complex is deposited. C1Q comes in and binds to the FC portion of the antibody. In previous videos, we have shown how the classical pathway activation takes place, leading to C4B and C3B deposition, an amplification process that leads to production of C5A a potent chemoattractant and activator of immune cells, and formation of the membrane attack complex. Overall, activation of the complement pathway leads to tissue damage and lupus nephritis. As we discussed earlier, during SLE, autoantibodies are formed and bind to red blood cells, leukocytes, lymphocytes, and platelets. Then the classical pathway is initiated, leading to C3B deposition and MAC formation, which results in direct RBC lysis. Similarly, indirect lysis due to phagocytosis can also occur in which cells coated with autoantibodies are recognized by macrophages and phagocytosed. Overall, these co processes cause anemia and cytopenias. You can assess the level of kidney damage by taking a biopsy and performing an H and E staining and an immunofluorescence assay. In the case of an immunofluorescence assay, antibodies that specifically recognize C3B, IgG antibodies, and C4D, subfragment of C4B, are used to determine the extent of the kidney damage. These antibodies are la labeled with FITC, fluorescence dye. As you can see in the image is an example of HNE staining of the glomerulus and in the next image we show a typical immunofluorescence assay to, to determine lupus nephritis using FITC, anti-IgG, anti-C3, or anti-C4. The damage is classified in six categories that reflect the degree of progression of lupus nephritis. Immune complexes can either be membrane-bound or soluble in plasma. Soluble immune complexes are easier to get rid of via the classical pathway, which is reviewed in previous videos. Membrane-bound complexes can result in inflammation and tissue damage. In lupus, specifically during the stages of the disease where there is lupus nephritis, the levels of C4 in plasma are drastically reduced. It is important to understand why this happens. Basically, the classical pathway is initiated when C1 binds the immune complex. As shown in previous videos, C1s cleaves C4 to generate C4A and C4B. C4B is deposited on the surface of the immune complex and kidney. There is constant activation of the classical pathway in lupus nephritis, and therefore, there is a continuous cleavage of C4 into C4A and C4B. Due to the constant activation of the classical pathway in lupus nephritis, there is massive C4B deposition on the cell surface. This constant deposition eventually leads to consumption of C4 found in plasma. Similarly, C3 levels are also low in plasma. This is because C1 complex cleaves C4 and C2 forming membrane-bound C3 convertase, C4B to B. C3 convertase cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. C3B is continuously deposited. Therefore, 
Same as C4, C3 is continuously used up and consumed. Consumption of C3 and C4 levels or low levels of C3 and C4 in plasma leads to low CH50 and AP50 activity. In summary, we have seen that the complement system plays a fundamental role in SLE. Complement deficiency is associated with SLE but also contributes to tissue damage. As always, please give us a like if you've enjoyed the video and feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you.